Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Plays and Fades video, week nine edition in the NFL. Let's get this video started with the quarterback that I like this week, Drew Brees. The Saints are at home, seven point favorite against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are the 31st ranked team against the pass this year. Plain and simple, Drew Brees, it's time. It's time we get one of those 350 yard games and four touchdowns. Next up, I'm gonna give you another quarterback that I like this week, and he might be a little sneaky. Carson Wentz. Right now, Carson Wentz is playing at an MVP level. In my opinion, he is the MVP through the first eight weeks. He's at home playing the Denver Broncos, and this year, the Denver Broncos aren't as elite defensively as they were in the past. The Broncos defense has already surrendered 12 passing touchdowns to only four interceptions this year. And especially against the Denver Broncos, where a lot of people think that their defense is so elite, you might see him at low ownership. Next up, I'm going to go right into wide receiver. And I know you might be thinking what happened to running back. I'm scattered through around eight to nine different running backs I like this week. So instead of putting all these names up here, I'll just give you three names that I really like. I think Carlos Hyde is underpriced. Adrian Peterson in that same game. And if I'm paying up for someone, I'm thinking Leonard Fournette. He's had about three weeks off. Jacksonville's coming off a bye week and they didn't play him the week before against the Colts. Let's get into the wide receivers now because you actually see names on the board. T.Y. Hilton. T.Y. Hilton only a couple of weeks ago, was in the top 10 in salary on FanDuel. He's 6,600 now, and it's an absolute joke. In a game in which the Colts should be trailing, according to the point spread, I'm expecting the Colts to have to throw from behind. The way I see this game shaping out, I think Jacoby Brissett's going to have to throw about 30 to 40 times. T.Y. Hilton has already complained about not getting the ball enough, and Chuck Pagano came out and said that we need to get our best players the ball. He's clearly the best offensive player on the Indianapolis Colts this year. Next up, a wide receiver that fits the same exact mold as T.Y. Hilton, who's underpriced, Sammy Watkins. Now, let me start by saying both T.Y. Hilton and Sammy Watkins are strictly tournament plays. These guys can either go for 20 points, are 2.3 points. But these are the kind of wide receivers that are gonna win you these big tournaments. Watkins peaked at 7,200 this year. Now he's in a great matchup against the New York Giants coming off a of bye week. Janoris Jenkins is out. Eli Apples is one of the worst defensive backs according to Pro Football Focus. Next up, another wide receiver I love this week, Mike Thomas. He goes by the social media name of Can't Guard Mike, but apparently this year, everyone's guarding Mike. Thanks a lot, my second round pick. But this week, everything I said about Drew Brees could be applied to Mike Thomas at home and he's Drew Brees' number one target. If you look at his game log, Mike Thomas has been pretty solid. On average, he's seeing eight targets a game. He just hasn't scored a touchdown yet. This is another guy that's also ridiculously underpriced. Pivoting off Mike Thomas, give me some Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson is the definition of a tournament play. This guy's either gonna get you two points or 20. He's boomer bust. This week against the Saints in a game that they should be trailing, if Winston's shoulder is fine, I love his matchup against Crowley. Marcus Lattimore on the other side, probably gonna be occupied with Mike Evans. I love Deshaun Jackson to stretch the field in this game. I'll give you guys a little tease as to what my lineup is looking like. I got me some Drew Brees, Mike Thomas, and Deshaun Jackson, a little unconventional stack. If this stack is on fire, it means they got a throw from behind, and I love me Deshaun this week. Next up, we're gonna move over to the tight ends that I like. I'm gonna give you two, and for both, same reasoning behind it. Travis Kelsey, and Zach, I'm pretty much here every week, Ertz. Both of their matchups are superb. Playing against teams that rank in the bottom three at defending the tight end this year. Kelsey just smoked the Denver Broncos, who Zach Ertz is playing. Denver has been one of the worst teams at defending the tight end. And Zach Ertz is the main guy in Philadelphia. Moving on over to Kelsey, Dallas is one of the worst teams at defending the tight end this year. Sure, you're gonna have to pay up for these guys, the two most expensive tight ends on the slate, but people just naturally don't like to pay up for tight ends. I don't know, I can't explain it. But I'd much rather pay for one of these two guys in the 7,000 range than take a shot on a guy like Will Fuller. Last but not least, the defense that we're playing, the Philadelphia Eagles, plain and simple. Do you know who's starting for the Denver Broncos this week? Brock Osweiler. Moving on over to the fade section. Quarterback, Kirk Cousins. The Redskins are going on the road to play Seattle. Now you might be thinking about what Deshaun Watson did last week. Fine and very fair. But the Redskins offensive line is horrendous. Missing three starters already this week, potentially four. There's a lot of different spots I'd rather pivot off Kirk Cousins, and I'm not a fan of his matchup this week. Next up, the running back that I'm fading this week, Darren McFadden. Next up, the wide receiver I'm fading this week, AJ Green. For his price, I'd much rather go elsewhere. AJ Green is going to face the Jacksonville Jaguars secondary. Bouye and Ramsey have been a revelation this year. That duo, on average, per game, Five catches, 60 yards, craziness. I think it's the best corner duo in the NFL, and that's just a bad matchup for AJ Green. Next up, the wide receiver that I dislike this week, Will Fuller. Now I know it's easy to say now because Watson's not gonna be playing the rest of the year, 
Fair point. Will Fuller's price is $7,800. This guy is $100 more. Come on now. Next up, the tight end that I'm fading, Jordan Reed. He's missed one day of practice. He was limited in the other. Then he missed again. They're going to play Seattle. Earl Thomas might be out, and that's a plus matchup for the tight end. But dude, Jordan, Jordan Reed last week, come on, man. 1.5 points on FanDuel, killer. I'm just not going to deal with it. Even if he's playing, I can picture him running one or two routes, and then the hamstring tightens up, and then it's quiet for you. I'm all free this week. Last but not least, the defense that I'm fading this week, the Denver Broncos. I know you're going to hear people talk up the loss of Peters, the left tackle for the Eagles. I think the Eagles are going to do all they can to protect their young quarterback by running the ball. They just got J.H.I. and they still got LeGarrette Blunt and the rest of those running backs, Smallwood and Corey Clement. A lot of times people just gravitate to the big name and the Broncos defense the last couple of years has won people a lot of money in DFS, but just not for me this week. So there you have it, the week nine edition of the Plays and Fades video. If you want to find me, LamVM10 on all social media outlets. D-Generation Bets is the sports betting and DFS podcast that I host every week. DFS Fridays is up right now if you guys want to find out more details about the week that is. Thumbs up if you like the video. Spread the word. And I'll see you next week.